In a recent video, I showed you this tenoning jig, and this time around, I thought I'd show you how to use it. Now, as you can see, a tenoning jig is used to hold boards vertically so that you can cut tenons, strangely enough. However, with a little imagination, you can use this to cut all sorts of stuff. A table saw is designed to cut a board lying horizontally on its face or its edge and square to the plane of the blade. But every now and then, you need to cut the end of the board. And to do that, you must hold the board vertically parallel to that same plane. A tenoning jig does just that. It needn't be anything complex. This jig has just three parts, a base, a side, and a back. The back and the side form a corner that cradles the workpiece and keeps it vertical. You might also include a clamp to hold the wood in the jig. I'm using a vertical toggle clamp and I've made the clamp movable so that I can attach it to either the side or the back. The jig was originally designed to mount to a crosscut sled, but it does just as well attached to a miter gauge as you see here. Now I've made an extension that mounts on the miter gauge and extends past the saw blade. You can position the tenoning jig anywhere along the extension and simply hold it in place with a clamp. Or you can add a T-track to the extension and fasten the jig in place with T-bolts and wing nuts. I prefer this arrangement because as you will soon see, it makes the jig much easier to position precisely. Make sure that the side of the tenoning jig is perfectly square to the table and therefore parallel to the plane of the blade. Now, if there is a problem, just put some leveling screws in the base of the jig, here and here. Use brass screws, so should you nick one, it won't hurt the blade. You also need a scale, so you can position the jig right where you want it. I've attached a self-adhesive scale to the top of the miter gauge extension and drew an indicator line on a piece of tape on the back of the tenoning jig. This way, if I need to move the jig a sixteenth of an inch, or a millimeter, or a cubit, I can do so without futzing around. Kinda hard to find an adhesive scale for cubits, however. There's one more thing that you can do to make this jig amazingly precise, and that's add a micro-adjustable stop. This is just a block of wood that attaches to the miter gauge extension, same as the jig just like that. Running through the stop is a long flathead machine screw, in this case a number 10 32 pitch machine screw. Turn the screw one full turn and you advance and retract the screw head one thirty-second of an inch. Use an M6 1.0 pitch machine screw and one turn will move the head one millimeter. When making this stop, you have to thread the wood and you can't use an ordinary tap for this. But Well, you could, but it isn't long enough. So, you have to make your own tap. Cut or file a groove down the length of another flathead machine screw, the same size and pitch as the one you're going to use in the stop. This turns the threads into teeth and makes the screw into a tap. Drill a hole through the stop slightly smaller than the screw, and then turn the tap you made into the stop. The teeth will cut the threads. Turn the tap in and out several times to loosen the fit of the screw. Then turn the real screw into the hole and tighten two jam nuts on the end to serve as a knob to turn the screw head. Install the stop in the miter gauge extension and put the screw head right up against the tenoning jig. Tighten it down, loosen the tenoning jig, and now we can adjust its position with excruciating precision. Just use the slot in the screw to count your rotations or half rotations, or quarter rotations. <laughs> there you go. Before we use this jig to make a tenon, let's get our terminology straight. A tenon is actually one half of a mortise and tenon joint. The tenon fits in the mortise. It's actually part of the board where the uh, width and or the thickness has been reduced. The step 
where the tenon begins is the shoulder. The whiter faces on the tenon are called the cheeks, and the narrower faces are the edges, sometimes the edge cheeks. The cheeks and the edges meet the walls and the ends of the mortise. This board is three quarters of an inch thick by two inches wide. That's 19 by 51 millimeters. I'm going to reduce both the width and the thickness by the same amount to make the tenon, and the tenon will end up one inch or 25 millimeters long. Now, to do all this, let's start by zeroing the scale. For the scale to be useful, you must align it with the edges of the saw teeth opposite the side of the jig. Hold a piece of wood against the blade teeth and slide the tenoning jig over so it rests against the wood. Put a piece of masking tape on the back of the jig and make a mark at zero or whatever number you're using for zero. Start cutting with the shoulders. Slide the jig over one inch, that's 25 millimeters and lock it down, and then double check. Always double check to make sure the jig is where you want it, and it is. By the way, this technique works best with an ordinary ripping blade. The teeth of the rip saw ground flat, straight across the tooth, and it leaves a nice square cut. Adjust the depth of cut so that the saw blade protrudes just a short distance above the table. Using the tenoning jig you, like you would a stop block, cut around the piece of wood, faces and edges, to create the shoulders. Next, cut the cheeks. Reposition the jig, raise the blade, and make a test cut. Looks pretty good. If you need to reposition the jig just a little bit, use the micro adjuster on the stop. When you're sure the jig and the blade are positioned correctly, cut the cheeks with the clamp mounted in the side. Then cut the edges with the clamp mounted in the back. Here are the freshly cut tenons. Very clean, almost no tear out. Two quick warnings. Because this is a movable clamp, Always make sure that it won't interfere with the blade before you cut. Second, when you do cut, always cut on the outside of the tenon. Don't pinch the wood in between the tenon and the side. If you do, there may be a kickback. If you have a problem with tear out, and chances are you might because this back gets pretty chewed up, it's a problem that's easily solved by just making yourself a temporary back out of one quarter inch or six millimeter plywood. Just slide in place and clamp it to the back. This will back up the cut and keep the wood from tearing out until the temporary back gets all chewed up. And then you just take it out, turn it over, and chew on it some more. Okay, we've made the tenon. Now, what about the mortise? Well, unfortunately, this jig probably can't help you. A mortise is just a groove that is stopped or blind on both ends. And this jig has trouble with the blind part. You'll have to use a mortiser, a router, or a uh, drill press to do that. However, if you want to make a slot mortise and tenon, this is your tool. A slot mortise is nothing more than an open groove in the end of a board. Cut a tenon with shoulders only on the cheeks. Don't cut the edges. Then clamp the board to be mortised in the jig and cut a slot in the end. Make several passes, turning the board edge for edge until the mortise is as wide as the tenon is thick. And here we go. One slot mortise and tenon. Now, you may have noticed that I used a slightly taller miter gauge extension for this. I did this because I didn't want the blade to bite into the T-track on my other one. If you're going to do a lot of these slot mortars and tenons, you may want to make a taller extension to begin with. From a slot mortise and tenon, it's a short jump to a splined miter joint. The spline is just a floating tenon, and the mortise is a groove that you cut along the mitered end. 
You just have to hold the board at an angle as you cut it, instead of straight up and down. Cut angled blocks to serve as guides that will hold the boards at the proper angle and attach them to the side of the jig. Place a scrap in the jig and clamp it down. Notice that I'm using more than one clamp. Slowly feed the work over the blade or data. If you're satisfied with your setup, cut all the spline grooves in the mitered ends of the work. As you can see, the spline grooves in these spline miters run from edge to edge. However, you can also use this jig to cut them from face to face. And you do not have to stick with the table saw. Instead of the saw, I'm using the tenoning jig on a router table. By cutting through the faces of the mitered boards with a dovetail bit, I'll create some butterfly joints. And you can use this same setup, minus the jig, to make the butterfly splines. And the results, as you can see, are spectacular. It's a simple jig, but it's remarkably versatile. The plans for this jig and the micro-adjustable stop are available from the Workshop Companion Store online. And if you don't like this particular jig, we have books with plans for dozens of these suckers. Adjustable backstops, fence followers, multiple clamps, Bluetooth, whatever you need. Please, like, subscribe, and buy to keep our saws sawing, our routers routing, and our cameras camera-ing. <laughs> and hey, thank you for your kind attention.